oh, simply because it doesn't have a public option. Even Howard Dean, who came out right away when the public option got dropped and said, let's kill this bill and start over, has already backed off. Uh, another perspective on this issue is that of conservatives for patients' rights. Uh, we sp speak with their policy director, Carrie uh, Telesco, uh, who joins us on the phone right now. Ms. Telesco, um, as far as the process where it stands right now between the, the, the House and the Senate bills being uh, reconciled, uh, what's your role in this? Uh, our, our role is the same role we've had since we started this um, March back, back in January of, of last year. We want to make sure that any reforms that are passed, we are very pro-reform, but we want to make sure that any reforms that are passed benefit health care consumers and benefit the medical community. We don't see that in this bill, and uh, we either House or Senate bill, and we are going to continue to advocate it for uh, patient-centered reforms and to educate the public about what all these arcane and really confusing terms really mean. As far as you we run a progressive uh, campaign on this issue, what kind of results have you seen from that? Well, it, it's amazing to me. Um, I've, I've gone out in public. I've done a lot of radio, a lot of TV, and a lot of, uh, you know, Tea Party events and uh, health care reform events. And what amazes me the most is how much the American people really do know about this stuff. Just folks who don't live inside the Beltway bubble like the rest of us and spend all day studying health care reform really understand. They understand the disincentives to cover people that are in, in the Senate and House plans. They understand that it's going to raise the cost of their premiums. They know that their taxes are going to go up, both their income taxes, and they may be facing taxes on their insurance plans. And they also know, as um, your last guest mentioned very articulately, that this, either the House or the Senate bill, no matter whether you want to call it an exchange or a public option, is a move toward a government takeover of medical care. And that's what we want to make sure that we do not see happen in the United States. So aside from the, the ads, how are you educating those who, are, who have questions about it? Uh, we have um, blogs that go out every day. We have something called the Daily Digest, which um, informs people about what's going on in health care. We are working with, in coalition with a number of groups um, throughout the country, hundreds probably, um, sharing information and facts and uh, an understanding of the plans on a daily basis. So we, we're very, very happy with the response that we've had, both from the grassroots side and also from the ads. Every time we run a new set of ads where our website is just flooded, with inquiries from people, questions, and, you know, thanks for getting this out there. Because for a long time, um, Conservatives for Patients' Rights, last spring, we were pretty much the only group out there running ads and explaining to people what's about to come down the path. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just very grateful that we could take that role. Ms. Robinson, do you have a question? Yeah, there's starting to be um, a, a push already. This bill hasn't even gotten into conference yet, uh, talking about repeal. Um, is that something that, that uh, you all would, would, would support, assuming that this gets, uh, gets passed into law? And, and if not, is there, is there a particular provision that you really oppose the most that you, you would like to see not enacted? Um, yeah, it, it's really too early to say, you know, what we would do if this thing passes. Our, our position all along has been that the, a public option or exchange, the one that has um, in Massachusetts, which has really hurt the, the uh, health care consumers of Massachusetts, bankrupting the state, people getting knocked out of coverage already. We don't want to see any of that in there. What we want to see are reforms that will allow the 15 percent or so of people in this country who are uninsured to be able to get into the system that the rest of us are all in, whether it be through a government subsidy or um, an, an IRS mechanism or whatever, uh, we'll never support anything that has, you know, again, a, the gateway drug to, to single payer, which both the House and Senate bill has. So we will remain focused on that. Um, you know, and it, no one really knows. It's, it's such a crazy thing right at the moment whether we're either going to go to conference at all, whether the House is going to have to deal with the Senate bill on the floor. So I think we'll wait for that to fall out before we make a decision. But there's no question at all that anything passed or unpassed that has a public option or any kind of government control of health care in there, we will op oppose today, tomorrow, and next year. Terry Telasco of the Conservatives for Patients' Rights. He's their policy director. Thank you. Thank you. Anytime. Uh, this group, the Tea Party rallies that we saw over the summer, how influential, in your estimation, were they in this whole process? 
Well, I think um, they they were they were as as she said the, the first group out running ads. So they the, I think at the beginning, um, not so much. I think during over the summer it was hard to to tell you know to tease out how much was genuine you know people who were angry about this.